Hello everyone and welcome again to another Vic Systems video. In this video, we're going to be talking about a Flutter package called Provider. Most often, it's important to share data between screens in your Flutter application or between widgets. This is also this is known as state management. Flutter gives us different ways of doing this, and a recommended way is using a package called Provider. In this video, I'm going to be walking us through on how to actually install the provider package on your Flutter application and how to use it within your application. So first step, we're going to create a fresh Flutter application. I'm just going to hit the command Flutter create provider example and just uh, we're going to hit enter now and allow it to um, generate some code for us. So now that is finished, we're going to be navigating into the provider underscore example folder, which is the folder for our project. So let's be sure we list out the files we have there. We're in the right folder now. First steps we want to do right now is actually add the package to our popspec.yaml file. So we can simply do this by going to the website pub.dev and searching for provider. So that's the page we are currently. Now on the installation tab we have Flutter pub add provider. We're going to just copy that now and um, paste that in our terminal. So that has been pasted. This is going to add the dependencies, the, the dependency um, provider to our project. If we head on now to the um, podspec.yaml, we can find the dependency there. All right. What we're going to do right now is just to do flutter pub get. So now we are sure our installation is complete. The next step for us to do to go through right now is head on to the main.dat in the main.dat file we're going to be doing away with all of this starter code and we'll be starting a fresh um, boilerplate code and taking because of all the unnecessary comments and all so we're going to be clearing out all of this now that we have all of that out of the way the first step we want to do here is actually import uh, the material.dat So we just hit import. Okay, here we have the suggestions. I'm just going to hit tab on my keyboard. I'm not I'm now going to type in material dot that okay and hit tab again to complete. Now the next function I want to create here is the main function. This is going to be the entry point of the application. This also returns another function called the run app. And here I'm going to create uh, a class called my app. Okay, I'm having some errors here because I haven't created the widget my app and I'm just going to do that shortly. Okay, I'm going to head on here and type in STL. This could be a stateless widget. I'm just going to type in STL and tap on um, tab on the keyboard and um, type in my app. So here we're going to be returning material app. Okay, and um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. We will be using the route. So here we're going to um, add as a property the initial route and this is just going to be a forward slash and right here we're going to add in another property called the route which is actually um, an, uh, an object and um, here we're going to be de defining the different routes within our system so um, the first route we are defining is the the one with the forward slash okay so I'm going to have a column there and I'm going to call this home all right currently this home doesn't exist I'm going to head on to my lib folder 
and um, I could create another folder here called screens I just do that then within this folder I could create home dot that okay within home dot that I can import my material dot that again material dot just hit tab okay then here I can return a stateless widget also here I'm going to call it home I'm going to head on to the return statement and I could do a center right here and I could just do a child okay uh, the child could return a text widget we're going to call this home all right so we're just going to head down to our um, main dot that again and if we're lucky we could have a suggestion to import the right um, file hope we did that correctly okay so i need to end this with a, with a semicolon okay so we are all set to go we have an error here because i have to add context to return that page okay here we go all right so that error is cleared out so on um, initializing this app is going to hit the the home screen okay so the next step we need to do right now is head on to our home um, screen and um, instead of returning the text here what I want to return is actually scaffold so I could just take all of this out then return here a scaffold and within the scaffold I'm gonna have a body within the body I can also have a center widget the center widget could return a child uh, column the column is going to return um, children and um, um, here we are basically going to be having a text widget this is actually going to display um, the uh, a text on the center but we want to use this to display the numbers what we are doing here is the normal flutter application we are familiar with but this time around we will be doing an increment a decrement and also a reset button okay so right here let's just call this um, let's just call this number all right so one of the properties we could also add within our scaffold is the floating action button so i'm just going to do that here the floating action button takes in um, a couple of widgets well here we will be returning a row of widgets okay and uh, within here we have some we have the children and i want to return a floating action button in the floating action button I'm going to need a method okay for now let's just put that as empty and um, I'm going to need a child also this child is going to return a widget and that widget is going to be an icon so I could just do a simple icon like so uh, the first floating button is going to be an increment button the the next one is going to be a reset button and the last one is going to be a decrement um, button okay so let's just go ahead and do that some of the icons i could have um i could have add okay i have an error here because i need the comma so this is just a basically what we have here and i'm just going to be doing a little bit of styling here uh, the main axis alignment I actually want this to be towards the right okay uh, but before then let's just duplicate this because we'll be having we'll actually be having three buttons okay so add uh, we could call this uh, exposure zero it's actually an icon then we could have delete okay okay so for the items within this row i want to set them towards the end of the screen towards the right so i'm going to do a main axis alignment here and i'm going to hit 
end then for the column i actually want everything to be uh, centralized so i'm going to, i'm also going to do a main axis alignment here and i'm just going to hit center okay so at this point let's uh, run the application and see what we have so far okay so to do that i'm just going to hit flutter run give it some time what we're going to do here is just choose the platform we want to run this application on and i'm just going to select chrome 2. so here we go we have our app running i'm just going to adjust one of the icons instead of delete let's just have remove here okay i'm just going to tap on r to restart our app take a look at that okay so i'm um, currently um on click of on any of these buttons does nothing to the application the next thing we want to do right now is head on to our uh, lib folder and here we are going to be creating a folder called providers okay here within providers we are going to be creating a file we're going to call this counter provider So let's go ahead and create that counter provider dot that okay within the counter provider dot that we need to import our material and package also so we'll just do the same thing material dot that we're going to create a class called counter the counter class is going to extend another class that's the change notifier which is already available within the material package okay here in the first things we want to do right now is create a variable called counter and we are going to initialize this at zero the next thing we want to do right now is also um, uh, create a get function which would enable us to always get the current um, count um, depending on the buttons that are being pressed okay so we're just going to have counts there uh, this is going to be a get all right and this is going to return the counter like so the next thing we want to do right now is have three functions one to increment the value one to reset the value and one to uh, decrement the value okay so we're going to be having a void uh, method or function we're going to call this increment increment okay and this is just going to this is going to add to the current value of our counter and return that same value okay so for the decrement is going to be the opposite okay then for the reset let's format this properly for the reset we are going to have counter equal to a zero okay this is going to be reset okay notice um, the the variable for the get function is different from what we have as our counter this is very very important to note okay so we have a couple of functions in this uh, provider the next step we want to uh, do now is to um, click on these buttons and actually access these methods within this provider so one of the first steps we want to do is head on to our home dot that and um, here we are going to be importing the provider package we are also going to be putting, importing a custom provider okay you can find that here 
and we have counter provider so with this we have access to a couple of things we're going to be picking the first button which is the increment button and um, we're going to be adjusting this function right here to actually return us a context from this context sorry context I should be able to read I'm going to have a generic type of our counter then hitting my dot I could assess the different um, methods okay and here I can see increment so I'm just going to select that so the same thing goes for the reset button it's also going to return a context within the context we can assess read within read we can get the generic type counter which is the class we created in our counter provider um, of that okay and here we are going to be having reset okay we have the reset all right the next uh, thing is also similar this is for the decrement okay now we will expect that when we hit on the buttons we could we should be seeing some changes but nothing is going to happen for now okay instead we have some errors uh, right here the, the reason for this is we have no listener we do not have a way to tell the widget to listen to these um, changes and to actually fix that we're going to head on to a main dot that and here we are going to actually inject uh, those actions within our application so um, first things we want to do right now is actually import our provider package which we're going to do like so then import our custom um, provider package okay and uh, before we actually return my app we are going to be using a capacity of this provider package called the multi provider this will enable us to register the different providers we have within our uh, application and so far we have uh, the change notifier provider which is going to return us a custom provider the create property here is going to return us a builder though we will not be using that so we're just going to be returning our counter if we have other um, other providers we could just list them here so the multi provider also takes as a child my app from here the next step we want to do right now is head on back to our home under that but instead of us having number here we want to actually insert that dynamic value and to do that we can always access our um, data by using the convention context but this time around i'm not going to be doing a read instead i'm going to be doing a listen Sorry. Text. sorry watch actually I'll be doing a watch and in the same way I need my generic type which is counter and here I need to get count so I'm just going to be adjusting how I declared this variable count um, I'm taking away the underscore for some reason it doesn't work 
okay so that clears out that error so this actually gets us the current value of uh, depending on the buttons being clicked okay so after doing all of this if you still tap on our buttons there is no change one of the reason why we have that is because in our counter provider after this increment we are not actually notifying the whole app that this change has happened so we actually have a method called the notify listener and without this um, what this does is dispatches dispatches the information to any other widget listening to um, this action so i'm just going to do this after every button So now I'm going to head on to my app right now and um, as I tap it increases, it also reduces and I could reset to, to zero. So this is just a simple way of us describing how we could actually pass some methods, pass some data from one screen to the other screen. As you can see on the home page is where we have our buttons, they are just calling onto methods that are uh, sitting within the, the counter provider. Uh, the counter provider that we created and as these actions take place they dispatch these actions throughout the whole application and the main dot that can actually listen to these changes thank you very much for watching i do hope you learned a lot from this video um please give this video a like and then um, subscribe thank you very much